recording and then I'll start streaming. So it's connecting now. Let me just double check to make sure that everything is golden here. There's always the fun part of when we do these. It's like, and live stream now. And it's like, okay. All right, all right. It's showing live. Yeah? Oh, right, look live? at that. All right, it's showing live. All right, let me yeah? just uh, right. have to mute myself there on that one so I don't yeah, get that I'm weird feedback. Because I can hear you. <laughs> all righty there, sir. Do, 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 do. All right. So, we're officially live. How do you feel? Uh, well, I'm still not sure that we are live. I mean, uh, with what with the boomerish trend of today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You keep doing what you're going to do. I got to read some advertisements and product placements. That's what helps pay for this podcast. So okay, you, sure. Go ahead. I hope do there's you. some chocolate in there. <laughs> and I'll do me. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Stellar Sound Podcast, where music of creativity and the artist meet me. When I get to sit there and I get to interview them, pop some questions and figure out what makes them tick, how they tick, how fast they tick, and how fast they can get annoyed with my questions. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you in part by Dungeons and Dragons. I know, right? The big nerd inside of me. I know, Milan. It's so good. So Dungeons and Dragons is one of my favorite games on the history of this planet. I've been playing it since I was in grade nine. From three, 3.5, and five, those are my favorites. You can fight me if you say otherwise. And I'm just in love with the whole franchise in terms of everything that comes out. Um, I used to buy books all the time. Now I found out through PDFs you can buy them. and Buy them, don't illegally download them. You buy them, and just easy to carry around on my iPad, which I do, and they're a good casual read. But this particular episode is brought to you in part by the new one that came out by Fay Games, that's F-A-E, called Corruption of Cave Star. Hoo! Hoo! I'm still waiting for my copy to come in, but I'm excited to read this, man. Just looking at the, the cover and the artwork, it has some like weird Gorgon monster thing coming out, kind of like Legend of Zelda, which has already given me some throwback vibes, and I'm just really excited to see what I can do, see what I can muster up in this campaign. All I know is, so far about the campaign, is it is going to involve a interesting quest. Now, I get that interesting quest is very much a broad statement, but ho ho ho, they always get better, don't they? We all remember the first one in 3.5, where you and your buddies went to a bar and then had to go rescue some dude and some gremlins and some goblins. We all know how that played out. I died the first time I played it, but he got kill shot. But it's okay, it's not gonna happen this one. You know why? Because Fae Games, that's F-A-E, is the best around when it comes to writing this stuff. And I myself am so excited. My book is coming straight from the Netherlands because that's where my boss is. <laughs> so anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the advertisements. Woo. And now, as you see on my screen, I share it with somebody, a man who's better looking than I am and has an awesome headphone. He also has a green shirt on for those who are colorblind, like one of my friends who I know is colorblind and will watch this later. That's a green shirt, my friend. Colorblind friend too. <laughs> oh, awesome. Cool. We'll discuss that. <laughs> you guys are in a bowling league now. You have no idea what your balls are. but player, the... actually. He's a bass player and he's awesome. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank the... you for complimenting on my shirt, by the way. I really love it. Oh, good. I like it too. It's, I like neutral colored shirts. It makes it easier for acting and just walking around in public, to be it honest. It doesn't show, and it doesn't show how overweight I am. <laughs> you're, you're European. You can't be overweight. It's illegal. <laughs> compared to some other folks, right? <laughs> exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that you see in front of me, the man that you hear if you listen to this through any other sources like um, Spotify or iTunes, is a guy by the name of Mr. Milan. He just goes by Milan. I like to throw Mr. in front of it because of that MM sound going on. He is part of a band called Ego. They have an amazing song right now. I mean, they have an album coming out. You know what? I'm not even going to tell you all about that. I'm going to let him and I discuss that in the future. I don't want to spill too many beans. You know me. I'm the type of guy to tease you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to another episode of Stellar Sound Podcast, Milan. How you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> it's really, really fun to talk to you again. I mean, <laughs> um, we talked a little bit today when we were setting the sound, so it's really, really great to actually do this. Um, slightly nervous, if I may uh, confess. <laughs> Don't be nervous, man. Pretty much how this podcast works is as such. Uh, you essentially run it. You talk the most. I'm just going to ask questions and kind of pry, poke, see where we can take this conversation. 
and uh, see if anything cool comes of it in terms of just like little behind the scenes. I know that fans like that. Fans definitely love to know about the musical history and what you do. So let's just chit chat, have a conversation like we did this morning with a lot less cussing. Because <laughs> <'cause> tech <laughs> What's sucks. The first thing that I should say. <laughs> first thing. All right. First, you should introduce yourself. What is it you do and who are you with? Uh, well, currently in my room, there's absolutely nobody except for this, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> the dolphin, which can serve also like a sort of like a neck pillow or whatever you call it. Uh, my name is Milan and I come from a uh, town of Niš in Serbia. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I, I never know if it's the second and the, or the third largest town in, in Serbia but you know when you say second largest it sounds like wow massive no it's not <laughs> it's like maybe uh, 400,000 people I think and uh, yeah what do I do well um, I'm an English teacher uh, oh. I majored in English language and literature uh, like eight years ago mm -hmm means I'm not so young anymore <laughs> okay and um, yeah what else um, yeah so yeah I do this thing with this band that you mentioned I do this thing what do you do <laughs> well <laughs> maybe it's a little bit too early to be talking about that uh, maybe a little bit after hours kind of thing yeah no um, we are as, we, as you said and thank you so much for your kind introduction um, we are called ego and actually the band has been um, going on for a, quite a while now mm -hmm. but you know uh, after you know some gigs and some and an ep that we released we made a break and then you know um i didn't really know what to do next with that so i was a little bit depressed when it was kind of like um some members quit and so uh, then I didn't know if I should continue doing this or not. Mm -hmm. And then there were some of us, me and some of my friends. And then I started writing, you know, just writing some songs. And then I said, hey, maybe we could make an album. So and then uh, basically after a bunch of, you know, uh, completely unimportant stuff, I mean, to mention here, um, we actually got together and um, the guys that I'm playing with now uh, are my friends. Uh, there's four of us in the band and uh, we started playing like two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very complicated uh, and tangled actually adventure that this is, but knowing that things are kind of slowly, you know, the pieces are coming together. It kind of feels good. We finally released our first um, single. Oh. We were very nervous about which song should we release first. Actually, to be quite honest, we uh, this was supposed to be the second single, but oh. it was kind of like, a, yeah, it was kind of like the, uh, what do you call it? Spur of the moment or whatever. Yeah, that's an, yeah that works. Right. Oh my God, I'm starting to forget English. <laughs> It was, uh, you know, the last moment decision that we said, like, it should be this song that we released called Hypnotech. Yeah. I think it's a completely made up word. And and I, I really wanted to, uh, we really wanted to, um, to try this one uh, instead because we think that it's like the most, I dare say, the poppiest song maybe on the album, you know, okay. because... Um, it's catchy i think it's catchy and that's why we wanted it to be the first single so basically here we are and we are waiting for the entire album to finally come out super excited and eager and hella nervous about that so yeah well should be out later this year i hope i was gonna say so i have a few questions to kind of draw back on number one or i guess comments as well Number one, I've been privy enough to listen to the whole album, and I must say, it is amazing. I was listening to it before you came on, um, just kind of get a feel for it again. There's a few songs I definitely gravitate towards more than I do any others. Uh, for the North American fans that are going to be listening to this, it is an all in, it's all in English. It's not in Serbian, for the most part. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a great it's honestly the rhythm the tune the melodies of the whole thing and you're so drawn by it i almost feel like it's a story in in my mind and and what's happening just kind of like the struggle of what's happening going through especially with uh well 
I'll get to that later. Uh, but moving yeah. forward, why? So you, you had said there was a spur of the moment decision when you had selected the song. Um, I thought it was I thought it was pronounced hypnotic, but hypnotech. Um, hypnotech yeah. I, I was just wondering how you pronounced it. I was like, is he is he trying to do it this way? I was like, anyways, when when hypnotech was the one you decided because it was poppy. What was the original one that was going to uh, to come out first? The one that's gonna come out next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, so that's... Yeah, well, I'll be honest with you because, uh, I mean, by the time it comes out... Actually, I'm not sure that that's going to come out next. It's going to be the next video because um, this first video, which was done by our uh, friend Igor Jovanovic, uh, who I think did a pretty nice job, you know, because we wanted it to be a simple video, but effective, uh, which kind of uh, gravitates... Uh, from the start to the finish of the video, it, it starts, you know, it, it's a little bit, um, we wanted it to be a little bit psychedelic, but not, mm -hmm. we didn't want it to cause epileptic seizure or something, you know, so yeah, we were, I personally, I wanted it to be more, you know, more lights and more uh, movement, but then, you know, Igor, who is a professional, he said, like, no, <laughs> we should not do that because we don't want people to get a headache when they watch the video. So basically, uh, this video was, uh, we wanted it to be simple, yet uh, hopefully a little bit of an eye candy, if I may say so. Yeah. And the next one should be a little bit story driven. And um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be something like a short film. So yeah, Ooh. that song is Butterfly Effect. Uh, oh, you were telling me. You heard it here first, guys. Butterfly Effect. That's one of my, that's like my third favorite song in the album. Thank you. Uh, I love that song so much, to be honest, because uh, it's just some of the songs you create, it, it takes a whole lot of time, mm -hmm. especially if you want to get the sound right. And you sometimes you're not very sure what what you what you want, but you want an atmosphere and you're like, OK, how do I get this? Because we mm, uh, personally, I really like music, which is kind of like a combination of raw and synthetic yeah that's why one of my favorite bands is muse because i think that they're you know they just they're, they're absolutely crazy you know when it comes to this and they're so so brave but i still don't dare to be so you know uh, out there when it comes to that so one of the most complicated songs was undo Right. And uh, that one is basically what you what you heard is still not a one hundred percent finished version, but yeah, you had the privilege, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's definitely a privilege. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I think that uh, you know um, some of these songs they were just uh, so so. It took such a long time to make them, but Butterfly Effect. I don't know. I was just sitting in my room, but like. I, I can I can see myself sitting here because my desk is now here and it used to be here and I I just took the guitar and I was like I started playing mm -hmm. and you know most of the time when you when I start playing it's like just mumbling so I was like honey <laughs> so it's just complete mumbling and then um, for I, I I guess I had the the chorus if you remember it uh the chorus was like oh, and so on you know and i had that bit immediately it's just i always thought that it was a little bit like crap when people say oh where did that song come from and they say it came from above but this one really felt like that i was like oh my god i stole this from somebody definitely it, 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 it came i was too super easy. proud of that one yeah. but yeah that one just came like this and then i had to work on the lyrics right yeah right because i i, I I, th I don't think it would have been a good idea to keep it mumbling, you know? <laughs> There's only one artist I know who did that, and that was Childish Gambino on his album mm -hmm. Kawaii. Mm -hmm. He, um, I think you it was... the mumbling. He, he kept the mumbling. Yeah, I think it was in Candler Road. He's like... Nice. Oh, no, wait, it was... It's like, I don't have words for this song. I know <laughs> it should sound like this. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Awesome. I can't remember. No, it wasn't Candle Road. It was something else. Either way, point is, child, if you're doing that, that's Childish Gambino. You guys are on the same wavelength. I'm just saying, 
your I god. Love Charlie. Oh, by the way, I shook his hand one time and I cried. Oh no! You attended his concert? Oh, I attended his concert once, but I met him in public the other time. Man, mm. what was he like? Okay, so here's a bit of a story, and I'm sorry to take this over for a quick second, but in Toronto. It was um it was Trinity Billwood Parks. He was going on his like he was doing that weird thing where he put on Twitter being like I'm in Atlanta today. Uh meet me at this place at this time and we'll play the album. So I was in Toronto. Really? Yeah, he was doing it for for um BTI for because of the internet. And I was in my second year of college and I had I was supposed to have a math test that day. My buddy called me and he goes, "Dude, check Twitter." I check it Toronto or uh Childish had said, you know, Trinity Bellwoods, I'll be there by 3. So I went down to my teacher and I said, hey, I'm sorry to say this, my grandmother's in the hospital, she really needs me. And I completely lying and I just left, right? So basically I almost killed off grandma for childish. Oh no. And it was it was worth it. So I got there about halfway through childish, the album. Childish hmm? Grim Vino. <laughs> oh, oh my God, yes, Childish Grim Vino. Um, yeah. Actually, sorry, I've been to two of his concerts, totally forgot. And then, awesome. um, so anyways, I went to Trinity Bellwoods and in Trinity there's a bunch of trees. So I ended up climbing a tree just kind of ish above him and he had the world's poopiest speakers because I couldn't hear much. Oh, it was dude. him, his brother, and a girl. And they're just sitting there smoking weed. MTV comes by. Much music comes by. N the news comes by. They start interviewing him. Blah, 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 blah. The album finishes. He goes, thank you, Toronto. Uh, stay tuned for like the tour dates or whatever it is. And he leaves. Now, the way it goes is he was sitting here, and then he was walking out this way where there's like a gated arch. And for some reason, the fence only runs about 10 feet each side, so they just gave up making a fence. And so there was a crowd of people, and the crowd either went with him through it or left or right. And I went to the left, and he went to the right. And I was like, no, childish. And then as I'm sitting there, yeah, exactly. As I'm sitting there, like wallowing in my sins, a car pulls up, like a black car, and a chauffeur gets out, and he goes, hey, are you a fan of Childish? And I said, yes, I am. And he goes, watch this. Calls him up and he goes, yeah, I'm over here. Like raises his hand. Childish turns around. He starts walking towards me, right? And I whip oh. around and I was like, I love you, sir. And he's like, oh my God. <laughs> and Okay, I love hearing that stuff. <laughs> it, oh, it gets better, it gets better. So they're walking okay. towards me. It's Steve G, his brother, Childish Gambino and the girl. And I just had my hand out and I said, you know, Childish, you're an inspiration to, to my comedy, to whatever I do, my acting. And he just reached over and grasped my hand ever so slightly. And without even making eye contact, we were essentially just walking this way. He goes, keep doing you no matter what they say. Ah, that's epic. I know, right? Like, it was so good. Oh, Sort like, of like cheesy, but it's cool. <laughs> I know, like, he totally rehearsed that line. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to Oh, yeah. He, maybe he's like... This is just like a generic message, you know, oh, like, 100%. <laughs> automatic, like, keep doing you, keep doing you. <laughs> and then when he comes home, he's like, keep doing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great story, actually, I gotta say. And uh, people, uh, by the way, because um, you're a comedian, and I guess that you definitely had to watch Community, right? Of course. Oh, I love Community, yeah. It's such a good show. And I, I was so bummed when he left. I know. The whole show went down I, after he left. Yeah, definitely. I, I, you could see that they were trying to keep it up, but it didn't feel right without Donald Glover. Uh, okay, so I was going to say that... Um, actually, now that you said that, I really got to say a story. I, I really got to tell a story because... And I know that my friends, if, if they're listening to this, they're going to hate me so much because I, <laughs> I said this story so many times. I love it. But... You know the band Queens of the Stone Age, I hope? Yes. I met Josh Homie. How? The singer. Ugh, I was, I was, it, it was so ridiculous because they came to Serbia. Oh, I can't believe it. It's been seven years. So they came seven years ago and it was the best concert ever. And I just had so much fun. And, you know, there's this song that's called I Never Came. And I love that song so much. And I was, yeah. you know, I was. I wasn't really first row, but like first ten rows or something, and I and I yelled my fucking ass up, yelling like all the time, like I never care. You know, I love that song so much, and I was hoping that they would play it. And then they go off the stage, and then they get back, and then they start playing that song. And I was like, I was just asking my friends, or because it starts with the drum beat, 
and I was asking my friends, is it that one song? Is it that song? Is that song? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was almost crying when they started playing it. And then after the concert, you know, I, because a, a huge number of people, a huge number of my friends came from Nice to the city of Novi Sad, where Exit Festival is held. Okay. It was like uh, this beautiful fortress uh, there. And we, uh, me and some friends, you know, they actually, my friends uh, were leaving the ones from Nice. And I had uh, this friend from Belgrade and uh, she and I, we, I told her like, because previously I had met in this way, I had met um, Beth Gibbons of Portisit. Okay. Yeah. And I said something like, okay, let's go to the back and I'm sure that we're going to meet Josh. And she was like, oh, are you sure? And I said, yeah, we just got to be patient. And so the, the, the next thing that you see, like 15 or 20 minutes later, the, the fortress is empty, completely empty. My friends had gone mm -hmm. and I called them and I lied to them uh, that I had lost my wallet and I had stayed to, to search for it, you know? And uh, as a matter of fact, I was just waiting for the, you know, the guards to go away so that I can go to the backstage and, and uh, meet Josh. And so this friend also, she said, okay, I'm Milan, I'm sorry, but I really got to leave now. And I was like, okay, don't worry. I'm going to stay for a little while. And then I met the guitar player, Troy, and I thanked him for the song. And he was the nicest guy ever. But then I go into his, into the tent or whatever it is, because there were more bands. And then the Queens of the Stone Age tent was the biggest one, of course. And so I enter, I sneak in, and then I see on like a short hallway, I see Josh, who is like, a giant he's like two meters i'm sorry i don't know how much that is in feet and inches and like six at eight. That. yeah <laughs> good nice that was that was quick um so yeah and i see him turn uh he's you know his back is turned and uh he's he's speaking to some guys and then he's like ha, 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 and he goes into the other room and i yell like the biggest fan girl ever i'm like josh <laughs> he, he turns back he looks at me like this and he says, in these words, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> so he walks towards me and he gets bigger and bigger. He's like this giant, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get smacked or something like that. <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm like a kid. I say, can I have a photo with you? <laughs> he said, what have you got in return? And mm -hmm. I being the dumbass that I was, I didn't even bring a, a glass of beer. I should have. You know, and I just check from my pockets and I see that I have um, some tissues. And I said, <laughs> I swear this is not a made up story. I say, I have tissues. Maybe you'll need them later. And then he says, maybe you'll need them later when you're crying. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and we took a photo and there's this picture. Uh, and he looks like, you know, first he hugged me and then he moved his hand looked like this. <laughs> but it's the best story ever. Yeah. So I'm sorry if I if I uh, spoke too much on that. <laughs> no, it's all good. This is what this podcast is about. It's about getting yeah, to yeah. know the artist, right? So every artist has that artist they fangirl over, man. Oh, man. And there's so many of them that I fangirl over. Uh, by the way, you said that there uh, are some... Uh, you said the Childish Gambino is mumbling, but the one that mumbles most is Björk mm. and Sigur Ross. <coughs> they use gibberish in their songs, and I think it's amazing. It's... But I'm not so good at that. <laughs> it would sound ridiculous if I did it. Would Ego ever pair with a rapper for a song? Well, I think that this is something that we would have to ask the rest of the guys. Because I think, you know, um, my band, um, we are all completely different. When it comes to music, all of us listen to completely different music. For example, my drummer is like this straightforward grunge type uh, the bass player, he's like completely the the he's like the definition of an indie or alternative rock kind of guy. He's right. you know he he's you know borderline underground and he's not very into commercial stuff. And then there's uh, then there's uh, Ilya, the guitar player, who is he is uh, I don't know he's just uh, basically he's all over the place, but mm -hmm. he's more into hardcore, but the beautiful thing about him is that he, he just, he's like a sponge. He just, you know, um, grasps it all in. Right. Am mm -hmm. I, if I ever use the wrong word, please correct me. Okay. 
So uh, he is, uh, you know, he's listening to all kinds of stuff. And then I think that maybe him and I might agree to this, but I'm not really sure about the rhythm section, you know, because I listen to rock, alternative rock, but I also like to listen to some really good pop music and uh, electronic music and chill music. I really love Air, the French band, if you know Air. Never heard of them. Oh, they're amazing. You got to check them out. So Air. A I R, okay. Wonderful music, and I I think that I I'm gonna send it to you. Please so do. basically, I don't know if it if it ever comes up, if it ever comes along, who knows? Maybe. But one thing that I know that I would never do, and I'm really sorry for, uh, and I'm really sorry not for, <laughs> but maybe I should. Be. Oh my god, I'm really sorry uh, to <laughs> anybody who uh, is a fan, but I really would never do trap. I, it's just something that I don't understand. Call me a boomer, call me a hater, but ego will never do trap i this is what i swear i swear if as long as i'm in the band no trap in ego but maybe some rap uh part actually to be honest hypnotech in my head which was like created the idea for the song was uh brought actually came up i came up with it maybe like 10 years ago or something okay <clears throat> but just the melody like dang it dang it dang it dang it dang it and i had it and i was like Maybe there should be some raps, the rap stuff, you know, like some rap verse. But mm. I'm, I gotta say, I'm glad that I didn't keep that. So no rap for now. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But I think I could uh, do some mad rapping. I feel like it'd be I dope. I told you that. I told you about the Macklemore. I can do a thrift shop. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, when we were setting up the uh, behind the scenes where we were discussing on how we're going to make this work and how we're going to make this look good and we're trial and error and some stuff. Because as you know, guys, this is our first time streaming Twitch. By the way, we have uh, a few people watching right now, so hello to you guys. Um, but also, yeah, he was. we were talking about Macklemore in like 10,000 hours, essentially. And in that song, he discusses about how an artist is never truly satisfied. And that's the sacrifice you pay, which is true. <clears throat> Whether it be, you know, like a painter, a comedian, an actor, a musician of any kind. And then Milan casually just says, he's like, hey, I can rap all of Thrift Shop. <laughs> I was like, what? Just out of nowhere. I'm like, all right, I, I accept it. Cool. So that's, uh, that's how that came to be. Now... What was your first instrument that you played? Well, the first and only instrument that I ever played is the guitar. Oh, no, I don't mean like uh, learned well. I mean, it could have been like the recorder, or the triangle. It could have been whatever. Just trying? Oh, uh, well, it must have been the, uh, you know, that lame kind of, is it a synthesizer or whatever, you know, that, that kids learn at school. It's just really, really bad, you know, with those kind of um different sounds of different instruments and then this beat that goes something like um, lambada or something like and then you play over it so it must have been something like that my sister was in the school choir oh. and she yeah actually and she was really good at it and they kicked me out <laughs> They kicked me out. My teacher told me that, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And still to this day, I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. So you're like the Michael but Jordan. I wish, that I, could, I wish that I could look back into the past, maybe if there had been some kind of like time machine. Now, at this age, I would just like to go to my fifth grade and just listen to me. And probably I would say, oh, my God. Yeah. That's funny, man. So oh, yeah, it was the synthesizer, I think. Okay. And now you play the guitar like a legend. Yeah, no, not really. Oh, I'd say. I, I, I think that, you know, my uh, my guitar skills are pretty, you know, moderate. But the thing that I like, I was always lazy to practice, you know. I was always lazy to practice uh, scales and stuff. But I find beauty in uh, not knowing everything because it's, there's always more to discover. You know and then there's a challenge if there is a melody that comes up in your head and you're like oh dear i can't play this and that's like okay i gotta practice it so yeah that's why i think it's it's uh beautiful that that's the beauty of playing an instrument uh, like you know playing the guitar there's so many ways and so many sounds that you can make mm -hmm. what with the effects and pedals and even without them just so many different styles approaches 
couple of days ago I saw a guitar which is like this uh, is it like a MIDI guitar mm -hmm. but it also serves as a, as a regular guitar but it, it has all these kinds of like because I told you that I like Muse it has this like screen and there are some buttons and um, twitches and whatever you know and it's like amazing so basically uh this new guitar uh you can play uh you can set the tone of the piano and when you play on the guitar it sounds like a freaking piano so that's why i like the guitar i think it's an ever evolving instrument right okay that's that's a really in-depth answer because i know a few people uh like the one i sent you murphy she loves her uh her electric guitar and I get uh to hear that. she's so good at it and like this like it's not even fair like you hear that song and it's like oh my god and then she's also just as deadly with her acoustic guitar uh -huh. but one of my friends hates the acoustic guitar so much will never play it only electric and i was like really uh, like well uh, the first thing that of course i mean many of us start with the acoustic guitar first and then i hadn't touched the guitar the acoustic guitar for a long time and then when i when I start playing and I'm like, oh, it kind of feels like home because I don't know, there are so many people who just blah, 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 shred the electric guitar and I'm really not the type of guitar player, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and and then when I take the acoustic guitar, uh, it just feels so natural. I don't like playing the chords, you know, like the bonfire type thing it's so boring you smoking know? the water and, uh, mm. oh, no i can't mm. do that really mm. oh, that's the, all and the trust me the ex yugoslavian rock oh man you know when you're for example when you go to some trip and you have a guitar and they will always ask you for this like a school trip and then they ask you for that stuff and you gotta know that stuff and you hate that music you know i mean those songs that everybody requests but yeah i i, I really like uh creating melodies on, on the acoustic guitar. Okay, all right. So if we can change uh, focus of the conversation right now to the album that's coming out. We, we, we flirt and we tease with it a little bit. All right, so you had mentioned that some of these songs, like, or at least one of them was 10 years. Butterfly Effect was a 10 year song. Out of, this, out of the album, Hypnotech. sorry, which one? Ten. <laughs> Hypnotech. 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 Hypnotech, sorry, Hypnotech, Hypnotech. yeah, yeah. Like 10 years ago, yeah. 10 years ago. Um, how much of the album do you want me to talk about? Do you want to talk about the track listing? Do you want like anything? I'm 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 pretty fine with that. As a matter of fact, I'm really glad to. It kind of feels good to just let it out a little bit, you know. To uh, I feel like I'm, you know, uh, I've been keeping it for myself for such a long time. I feel like I got another confession to make, you know. So yeah, it really feels good to actually talk a little bit about it. So just. Go ahead and feel free. Fire away. Really fast All right, so I'm going to pretend, I'm going to be a little bit of a devil's advocate here and kind of mm -hmm. pretend to be the average person listening right now. So how many tracks are on this album? Is this like a quiz? Am I supposed to like... <laughs> uh, well, there's actually there's 11 tracks. Yeah. Uh, but there's 10 songs. So one of the tracks is like an intro to another, another mm -hmm. song. I don't know. I just kind of felt because it's uh, speaking of the acoustic guitar. It's a it's a it's an acoustic song called Crossroads, <coughs> and uh, it's just this. That's like the calmest and the saddest song on the album, and it just had this nice intro, which kind of sounds like it's on an old radio or something like it that. Does, yeah. And it has this sepia tone, uh, or is it sepia? Sepia or sepia? Sepia tone. Sepia. Tone, yeah, sepia tone. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it has the sepia tone, and I imagine like, you know, when you're a young child and you're cradling uh, in the chair or something, like rocking in the chair, whatever. Uh, and, um, and it kind of gives me this vibe. So I thought that that's a, you know, I I really didn't want to uh, smother the listener with that part, but I said like, okay, why don't we put it as a separate track? Right. And what we call it mechanisms, just like the album is called. So it's kind of like a cheesy move, but yeah. <laughs> so I listened to the album twice. And the first time, I just kind of took all the songs. But and I couldn't I... listen to it the third no. time. <laughs> because... <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sorry. No, I ran out of time. What happened was I had moved it all to my iTunes. And I see it's labeled like whatever, one, two, whatever it is. 
But the problem was, the first time I listened to it, I didn't move it to my iTunes. I just played it off of this default player thing. So it played track 1, 11, 10, 7. Uh, later. It went like out of order. And I was like, yeah, right. I was like, all right. I mean, I, whatever it is, what it is. And then when I put it onto iTunes and listen to it as it's chronologically supposed to, I'm like, oh, this makes more Not sense. Expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's a very important thing, actually. You know, I know there are some albums out there that just um, it's more important than you could imagine, because I think that there are some albums that don't really work very well because the track list should have been different. But then there are some track lists that are just perfect, as if they had made them into one big track. So I think that's very important. That's like MF Doom. All of his songs uh, flowed together. You can't take any of them out. Uh, come again? MF Doom. Ah, I've heard of. He's like an, he was rest in peace. He was an underground rapper. And oh yeah! Oh dear. All of his and he always performed with like a skull mask on. Interesting dude. Ah uh, yeah, I remember. I yeah. remember, but I didn't ever listen to it to be honest. It's it's something like. It's almost like you have to do one time and be like, all right, okay, I know who you're talking about. But I'm it's... gonna listen to it definitely. There's so much music that you should listen to. It's like, uh, I, I don't know what to listen to first. You know, it's like listen to this and this and this and this and this. And that's the beauty of. Um, um, yeah, exactly. So much music in the world. I, I used to be a type of guy that would just listen to songs, but I feel like as we discussed with albums, I fear that song, although it might have been a really great single, feels more appropriate when I listen to the album in its entirety. Yeah, yeah, it kind of fits. Mm. It, uh, yeah. Exactly. It's just the, the entire story. Um, today we mentioned that it's really nice to know the background of some songs. You told me about that guy, oh dear, uh, Belly? Yep, Belly. Featuring The Weeknd, and then you told me the story behind that, and it just gets a little bit more weight. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I can... Uh, I can relate to this uh, when people ask, you know, when artists ask, ask for people to just please listen to the album in its entirety. Please don't skip tracks. Listen in this order. That's just, you know, it's how it should be. And I, I have a problem with this kind of like now one more <laughs> another boomer alert kind of moment. But I have a problem with because we've established that we are boomers, right? <laughs> Based on our uh technological um knowledge uh, capacities there you <laughs> go. knowledge uh, i was gonna say that uh i i kind of have a problem with the very impatient uh culture of today very everything is so instant 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 it's like okay it's cool you know you can just uh watch some short videos on tiktok or just scroll through facebook and so on or what happened to like actually listening to music you know and uh, just um, you don't have 45 minutes of your precious time to listen to something that was worked on for like five years you know i, I don't i don't buy that so i think those people are missing out on so much you know and that's unfortunate and i've noticed too that even albums they used to be like an hour hour and a half long now they're just yeah. 40 minutes like 30 minutes some albums and i was like that's a sitcom bro yeah, no, that's like an episode of Friends. I was yeah. going to say that, you know, well, actually, you know, some albums, uh, some albums, I think they should be short. Mm. Uh, interesting thing is, for example, one of my favorite rock albums is Meteora by um, Linkin Park. Mm. And, uh, but it's such a short album. I didn't even know that until I saw it. it's like 33 minutes long. But I think that if it had rambled on for a little bit longer, it would have been too much because especially because of the type of music that this is very it would heavy, be kind yeah. of repetitive. So I don't really mind. Uh, I don't really care about the duration of the album, but just please don't stop making albums. Many people have asked me like, why do you make albums? Nobody listens to albums anymore. And I'm like, well, why should we ever do stuff that somebody else expects us to do? Why don't we do what we want, right? Break the mold, exactly. If everyone was doing the same thing, it's boring, right? There's a... Well, a, hmm? yeah. Uh, there's a yeah, Can yeah. Canadian rapper named Classified, and he talks about that in one of his things, in one of his songs. He goes, everyone's trying to pop like a Pringle, and all they're trying to do is just make singles, essentially, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> I have something. I, as a matter of fact, now that you mentioned Pringles, look at this. This kind of reminds me of the Pringles box. Oh my <laughs> lord! <laughs> what is that? This is, this is for cleaning the TV, and it looks like it's just this huge cleaning the TV and screen. So when you said Pringles, I immediately looked at that and thought of it. But yeah, uh, that's a good point to make. I think that everything is so very. Uh, fast and this comes from a guy who has an attention span of a goldfish and that's me you know yeah you've been doing well for this interview though <laughs> yeah well that's because we're talking about something that i'm interested in <laughs> if we were to start about start talking about politics i would just phase out right away okay so <laughs> yeah that's about that <laughs> all right now on the album what song was the absolute hardest to make? The one where you would lay in bed at night and be like, I need to scrap this. But you're also like, no, don't. And you're like, ah, my sanity. Oh, my dear. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually, when when I was thinking, I'll be honest with you, I was thinking about how maybe one day people would ask me this and I wouldn't know which one to <laughs> say because there's so many of them. <laughs> Actually, I think it's Undo. Just like I said, Undo yeah. is uh, the the song that I uh, personally I always imagined that song to be like. Uh, and some some of our friends helped us get the the sound, and I think it's getting there. Undo is this kind of uh, because I told you that I really like some electronic stuff, and I love trip hop so much. I love Massive Attack, Forty Cent, and all that stuff. I don't know that. British school of atmosphere in music mm -hmm. is just uh, the 90s. Uh, I'm a 90s child, you know, so that's why I just I really wanted it to be something between uh, I, I, I wanted this song to be uh, a standout when it comes to the sound. So sonically, it will be the most the least organic song. And that's why it, it's just a challenge because, you know, it's new for us mm -hmm. we are not really you know we are actually uh the funny thing is that we are already um planning on uh making songs for our second album and we have some really cool ideas and then we are like oh you got it it's, it has to be this has to be like a little bit more synthetic and yeah but mind you we are not going EPM or something like that when i say electronic you know most people uh confuse in serbia for example when you say electronic music they kind of uh, um, they find it they, they see it equal as uh, or equal to EDM, but that's okay. not it. You know, it's just a little bit more like um, maybe electronic drums instead of real drums, a little bit of more synthetic. So this was definitely the most difficult song to make. This one and Encounter, which is the heaviest track on the album. Yeah, those two were hell undo was hell hypnotic was also a little bit of a hell because i wanted it to be a uh personally when i imagined that song i wanted it to be very busy you know and it's mm. kind of chaotic so yeah uh how do you make it chaotic and uh, still make it audible you know so that's it it's a very interesting point and i this is why I do comedy and you do music because I would have absolutely <laughs> no way of figuring that out start screaming maybe like eating chips midway yeah, through yeah. the um, now, oh, yeah. crying, um, crying in your in your shower, like. <laughs> and, you know, the thing is, I, me personally, I, I could never write a book. I never, I, I don't know how do people write books. That's just insane. That's the point of. Uh, it's like an art piece that I could never ever do. I feel like you'd be able to do it if you had a writer with you. So if you're like, here are my thoughts, write it, and then be like. Um, that, cheating right hey, a lot of people do it man like i've heard of certain comedians and in, in, um oh what's it? it's a band um axel rose the dude from axel rose or, or oh. axel, anyways um i completely just watched that not the band axel the guy axel rose he okay. um he had a writer for his book that he just recently brought out and so did his mother for her book oh so it, it says written by but it's half written by, so it's written with and written whatever. But yeah, I well, mean, that legit. If you're writing, uh, if you're making like some memoir type thing, 
or if you have an idea but that's okay i think but i don't know i i think that i couldn't do it because i uh i could never let anybody write my song oh apart yeah from, apart from my bandmates of course yeah, yeah or if i'm collaborating with somebody but like for example pe somebody pen the song for us no i could never do that i i, I would feel like i'm betraying myself <laughs> so, so you're saying if i wrote you an awesome song you wouldn't sing it only if we collaborated on that <laughs> i would just stand there i have no musical skill i'd just be like <laughs> i don't think so you know nobody knows if they have musical skill until they try it uh, I wasn't singing in the band at first. I was this kind of like uh, man in the shadow type thing, you know. I was just we had a girl singer, mm. and uh, because basically the idea for Ego was to make a kick-ass rock band uh, led by a female vocal, mm -hmm. like garbage or skunk and nancy or something like that very much inspired by the 90s alternative rock which i think that alternative rock was at its peak in the 90s it's just you had everything and the most interesting thing is that alternative rock was pop of that time you know yeah. <clears throat> sorry so um basically uh i i wouldn't even dare to sing but then you know after a while i just started and tried and i was like hey maybe i can do this so maybe you can sing, but you don't know that you can sing. <laughs> I mean, my shower head would argue otherwise. So would my stereo, <laughs> I suppose. And everybody... The shampoo bottle and the shower gel are your judges. <laughs> On, when I sing, the birds fly. That's how bad it is. Like, it's it's not good. <laughs> maybe they feel liberated. Exactly. <laughs> Inspired to fly away. Um, now, what was the easiest song to write on this album? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, I love when you say that. Easy. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, the easiest song to make on the album. Oh, my dear. Well, I think it may have been The Road. Because, uh, okay. to be quite honest, that was the song that my friend who uh, used to play with me uh, and he helped me uh, make the album before the guys were, uh, you know, uh, became a part of, of Ego. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so yeah, this is like the part when I mentioned collaboration. He had this really beautiful melody from the beginning, uh, and and I really really liked it. And I said, okay, can you play that? And I will sing over it. So I just sang over it, and then we it kind of really clicked. And then our drummer and uh, this previous guitar player, uh, who actually helped co-create the road. I went to the toilet or something. We were having a rehearsal and I come back and I hear them playing that end. And I was like, whoa, that's great. So it just came together really, really quickly and easily. And I think that Slide Away came also very easily. What? What? Toilet. You're like, I went to the toilet, came back and they were doing stuff. I just yeah. imagine you're like, holy shit, that was good. And so yeah, was yeah. this. <laughs> Yeah, but that, exactly. I mean, as as uh, as wrong as it comes out when you say it like that, uh, oh my, uh, it actually it was really really like that, and that's like uh, this song. This song just clicked and slide away, uh, which uh, is actually the first song uh, apart from Ground Zero, which was an old song, and Crossroads, which I had the melody for a while. The first full song that came. Uh, with my voice, uh, for my voice. So the first song that I made for my singing voice was Slide Away, and it kind of came really easily, but it was held to record the vocals. So Slide I Away. I would get it right like this, but it was so difficult. And Slide Away might be our uh, favorite song as a band, you know. It's my favorite song on the album. Awesome. That's nice. a. I remember you, you asked me before in the pre interview, if you want to call it that. Yeah. You're like, what's your favorite song? I'm like, eh. You have to wait four and a half hours to find out. Okay, but now I'm 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 interested because you said that butterfly effect is your third. Mm -hmm. Slide away is the first. Which one is the second? So it's the road. The road? Oh, road. the road. Yeah. Nice. yeah, the road is that. Uh, the road is like a breather on the album. It it's was brilliant. Almost halfway through, and it's uh, just this. When I listen to the road, I imagine that you're like. Uh, 
after because the, the previous song is the right mistake and by the way i was really happy when you said that you felt like you listened to the story mm -hmm. uh that really means a lot oh my pleasure uh not just saying that uh so the right mistake which is track number four on the album is um uh, actually uh it's like about driving through your life and the things that you see throughout the through the window are the things that have happened to you in your yeah. life and it's like i imagine that uh like you're driving in the car actually you're in the back seat and it would be cool if the car was like the automatic car with, with no driver what do they call that tesla like auto driving and stuff for alert number three and then, <laughs> and then you're like the car is empty you're just in the back and then you just you look through the window and you just look uh you see uh the, the story of your life and then the road is like about actually coming to this destination and the destination is for me traveling from serbia to greece and then in the morning when we arrive and it's just you know you probably have a bad morning breath but you and you feel like you have been chewed by a whale or something like that you come out of the of the car and it feels so good to finally have arrived so that's what why the road is such a nice song for me i think it's definitely a road trip song 100 percent of the way cool nice oh, okay. that's good. i don't know i really hope that people will listen to it one day like that well <laughs> here's the thing when, when i go when i start traveling again because right now canada just or yeah i guess ontario the province i'm in we just started going into phase two or technically phase one of reopening we were locked down for a while there from covid oh, yeah. and we just like yeah. patty patios just opened up so i will be doing shows again um hey. and I'll, oh, thank you and i'll be for sure playing this song as i drive uh, i actually awesome. want hypnotech to be the song i walk out to if i get a chance to request oh, a song <laughs> yeah if i get it if I, get I'm a honored. No, no, <laughs> I like the song right I was, but it's like my that's my fourth favorite song in the album but i feel like like you said it's the most poppy one it uh, is because I it feel is like the pop just one. yeah, and I feel like if I were to just play randomly, like I don't know, slide away, it wouldn't have as much effect if I were to walk on the stage. Right? Oh yeah, because otherwise people would think that you're gonna make them cry. And yeah, exactly, cry. exactly. So I'm Slide like, away right. is very. Uh, it's a kind of like a somber kind of song. But I like it though. I like it. Yeah, me uh, too. I feel like you were talking. But to I, me. maybe I should write some happier stuff. I don't know. No, it's all good. Write, write your soul. You know what I mean. That's what you gotta do, man. <laughs> no, you're like my soul's dark. It's worse and worse. Like, let's not open that door. <laughs> that Pandora's box. The next album. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> the ideas for the next album are really good, and I'm really happy to have these guys in the band now because, uh, to be 100% honest, the first album felt like you know, of, of course, I had people doing the songs with me, but uh, and uh, amazing collaborators you know mm -hmm. uh just really really wonderful people and uh but creating it was a little bit of a lonely process and now it feels really good too because Ilya, our guitar player is insanely creative mm -hmm. and uh he's he has this um the difference between him and and, and i is that he is very much focused when he starts working on one song he wants to go through the the entire song and when it comes to me i work a little bit on this and a little bit on that but i get lost you know and it's kind of hard to follow me but it's really nice to have somebody who is kind of like goal oriented and uh his ideas are amazing and it just feels really good to know that i don't really need to be the one who thinks about it all and i, I just ask okay so what do you want me to do here <laughs> Because I trust him very much, and I trust the other guys too. It's it's just uh, yeah, it's good to have them. <laughs> exactly, you need some yin to your yang. Otherwise, it's not going to go very yeah, well. Because Honestly. you know, you get tired of yourself sometimes. I get tired. And not just that, but the beauty of uh, people uh, in your band listening to other music is uh, what what makes you a band. Of course, if you make a song, you know, uh, because every creator, every artist tends to repeat themselves, you know, repeat himself, herself, themselves. Oh my God, I'm not good with this, you know. Pronouns. Yeah, the political correct and stuff, yeah. Anyway, uh, I wanted to say that, <laughs> I wanted to say that um, it's, it's uh, every artist tends to 
repeat what they were doing and uh, after a while you just find that you are like spinning around and it's good to have somebody say oh okay that's good but what about this or, yeah like a puzzle of different pieces that kind of come together and that's why it's beautiful wow. so yeah i'm really happy and i'm so excited for that not to mention i mean it's uh needless to say that i can't wait for the first album to go out but i think that the moment when it's released we're never going to listen to it again and we're just oh. going to start focusing on the second album you had touched earlier about uh, a music video, a second one, right? When yeah. do you feel like that's going to get recorded? The plan is for it to get recorded, I'm hoping, next month in July. Mm. But it's going to take a little bit to get it together. So, uh, as I said, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, say too much about it, but. Uh, Butterfly Effect is the opening track on the album. It's just so important for us. It's the song that uh, feels so good to play, and uh, I can't wait for it. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of, you know, uh, an easy uh, solution for the opening track on the album to open the set. But I really can't wait for us to open with Butterfly Effect. And uh, when it comes to the video, it's going to be a little bit more complex because this guy that is uh, gonna do it is insanely talented. As a matter of fact, he was a, you know, a college, a university friend of mine, but after finishing English, he went on to study camera. So the guy oh. has uh, two degrees. Right. Crazy. Love it. <laughs> but he, I just, I love him to bits and he is so talented. And uh, you know, he's the kind of guy who you uh, who's, you ask him, you wanna do this? And he says, yeah. And uh, he says, you, you say, so like, what are the conditions? He says, like, just let me do it. And I'm like, okay, so I trust him so much. So I don't know anything except for that. And probably we're gonna release another uh, like lyric video before that. For okay. the summer. Perfect. I was yeah. gonna say, cause um, I know uh, with Stellar Sound, they want me to come over to Amsterdam and they want me to, to sit down and record a bunch of uh, episodes, you know, for the for the show. I don't know when that'll be at some point in the future, but basically, if you ever need a Canadian actor, I would love to make a free cameo in your thing. Just walk by. That would be great. Okay. <laughs> well, when we are around Canada, I'm gonna let you know. Or if you're around Europe, given that you are half German or something like yeah. that, you might visit Europe. Yeah. Of course. Well, yeah. I was gonna say, like, if I, if I hit up uh, the Netherlands, I told my Oma, I'm like, yo, I'm, like, I'm gonna go there for I don't know when. I think 10 days or whatever it is. And she's like, then go over to Germany. I'll meet you there. And I was like, all right. So well, if you go to Netherlands and Germany and then you can come to Serbia, why not? A hundred percent, man. I've been like yeah. Stein. <laughs> <laughs> come meet everybody. Yeah. <sighs> all right, sir. We've been at this for 57 minutes now. Is there anything else you want to discuss or shall we wrap this up? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I just want to say that it feels really good to, uh, talk to you and you're a great host oh, thank you so much and uh yeah uh this actually this is the very very first uh interview if i can say so or talk yeah. interview sounds kind of like i don't know when you say interview i feel like i'm some kind of <laughs> you know big uh, shot yeah like some kind of uh egocentric, <laughs> egocentric. <laughs> dude egocentric. own it this is an interview. I'm asking you questions about your process, about who you are, how you got here. Yeah, Just because we're the first person. Like, hmm? it, feels, it feels nice to have this also as a little bit of a casual talk because yeah. um, I don't think that interviews should be so, uh, you know, <coughs> formal or something. Yeah, next um, question. Yeah, so I just gotta say that uh, it was really great talking to you, and I hope that we get the chance to chat again, maybe after the album is out. Of course. <laughs> well, I have your number. I'll probably just keep texting you. You seem like a really solid dude, and you're funny as hell. So. Um... Thank you so much. Well, coming from a comedian, that's good. Right. <laughs> I appreciate so that. Next thing, next thing, we gotta hear you sing. Maybe you can be a uh, maybe you can be uh, I don't know a guest vocalist in some of our songs. Maybe the rap one. Oh my god! Yeah, I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where can uh, casual fans find you? Where can fans from North America find you guys on social media? Uh, there's a Facebook page, mm -hmm. and there's an Instagram page, and there's a YouTube channel. And for now, we only have this one video. However, uh, I think that we are seriously planning on releasing another song 
soon. And uh, yeah, uh, I really, really hope that this song that we have been working on and believing in uh, comes its way and finds its way to the audience all over the world, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's just really if 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 I wish for one song to be heard by people, I think it's Hypnotech, definitely. Oh my god, Hypnotech is so good. I'm gonna listen to it again after this. I think I think if what you should do, and I, like honestly, Hypnotech is such a powerful song. I would try to find the MMA community in Serbia if there is one, and be like, "What the hell is that?" Mixed martial arts. Oh dear. Right, That's and just so be terrible. like, "Hey, walk out to this I'm song." <laughs> MMA. Okay, I'm gonna check that out uh, definitely later. Because there's like the biggest one is UFC, but then there's also one championship. There's smaller promotions, right? And I pretty there's like a Russian one, and I'm fairly certain there's got to be a Serbian one. Probably. Like, yeah. And then what do I do next when I find them? Just say. You, you you contact everybody on there, and you're like, "Hey, I'm a band. Could you walk out to we're this song?" A yeah, I'm we're not a band. <laughs> we're a band. Yeah. Be like, here's our stuff. Here's our song. It's amazing. I think you would look really cool walking out to this song. Oh, nice. <laughs> and they do it. Good. Yeah, because usually the announcers are like, the song is whatever, whatever, by whatever, whatever. So That's a good idea. Yeah, We're going to keep in touch for more details. When it comes <laughs> to that, okay? Because I'm definitely going to forget the name of that. I'll tell you what, I'll even search up Serbian mixed martial arts promoters for you. I just... I don't... Well, wait, wait, wait. I know what MMA is. Jesus. <laughs> just a moment. I think we do have that. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I've never exactly yeah, looked it up. The Serbian MMA Federation. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, nice. exactly. Oh, wait, what if the guys don't like that song? Maybe they will kick my ass? Well, then, <laughs> could you imagine? Be like, haha, boom. Um, yeah. No, nah, you just recommend another one. Be like, oh, this isn't your favorite? Or even recommend three songs. Be like, well, the album's not out yet, so it'd be kind of hard. But I, but I should give them fire. I mean, the song, fire. You should. You should. Or give them money. One of the two. No, I, because Fire is such a slow song and maybe they would really need to kick me, uh, kick me in the ass for it. Yeah. Imagine a, a, an MMA fighter walking to da, 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 the slow stuff. Yeah. Like flexing. <laughs> no, like, that would be I mean, yeah. you could psych the opponent out. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, maybe it would confuse them. Imagine. All right. I'm just going to wrap this up with reading the... Uh, promotion one last time so ladies yeah. and gentlemen this episode with milan from oh, the band ego which check out their latest single hypnotech which i thought it was pronounced hypnotech but i was like ah whatever it's a great song love it poppy as sin it's a song i would i would i'd sing to in the shower if i could but i can't sing we all stop with that <laughs> and this episode this interview was brought to you in part by fay fae games and they came out, they came out with a new version of or an add-on extension to Dungeons and Dragons series 5 uh, called Corruption of Cave Star. You guys got to check it out. I'm waiting for mine. I've already got to read a little bit of it. So good, so excited. And you know, you know when I get this, I'm going to have to play it. I'm going to like I'm going to record myself. I'll take it to Serbia, Milan, and we'll get the whole band playing together. It'll be awesome. I'll be the dun I'll be the, the, the leader of everything. It'll be uh oh, it'll be fantastic. Oh, my my best friend is obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons, so yeah. I love okay. your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways. Thank you guys for your time. You guys were amazing, and we'll have to see you on the flip side. Yeah. Deuces. Thank you very much.